We're also learning new details about a federal lawsuit accusing Twitter of complicity in a brutal campaign of repression by Saudi Arabia. A Saudi aid worker who used an anonymous Twitter account to mock Saudi Arabia was arrested in 2018 and allegedly tortured. In a CBS News exclusive, his American sister is speaking with our chief investigative correspondent, Jim Axelrod. I want proof of life. I want to be able to see my brother and speak to him and make sure that he is okay. Arij al Sadan, an American citizen, and her brother Abdul Rahman, a Saudi national, grew up splitting time between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. When was the last time you spoke to your brother? More than five years ago. That's because her brother sits in a Saudi prison cell, not allowed to communicate with his family. His friends miss him. Um, I miss him dearly. After finishing college in California in 2013, Abdul Rahman returned to Riyadh and a job as a humanitarian aid worker. You have a good sense of humor? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was that sense of humor that got him in trouble. His Twitter account, mocking Saudi officials and religious figures, grew to 160,000 followers. Is Twitter important inside Saudi Arabia? There is no freedom of speech, so Twitter became more like the forum for people to express themselves, mostly anonymously. In its privacy policy, Twitter assured users it does not disclose private personal information, except in limited circumstances. But in a new lawsuit, Arij accuses Twitter of improperly divulging Abdul Rahman's identity to the Saudis and becoming a tool of transnational repression. How did you discover your brother was missing? He used to call my mom every single day. She was the first to notice. The calls were not going through, the messages were not going through, and my mom was freaking out. Coworkers eventually told the family Saudi officials arrested Abdul Rahman at his office, and they later learned he was being held and tortured. They broke his hand, smashed his finger, saying, this is the hand you tweet with. After three years, he was brought to a secret uh, hearing. Abdul Rahman al Sadan was charged with violating Saudi anti-terrorism laws. He was prosecuted under counter-terrorism laws. Yes. For tweeting. Yes. They want people to be afraid to speak out, to say, look, if you dare to criticize us, this is what we're going to charge you with. In 2021, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison, followed by a 20-year travel ban. None of this would have happened but for Twitter's corruption. That's a big word. It is. But Twitter lit the fuse. Attorney Jim Walden represents Arij al Sadan in her civil suit and points to a criminal case in California for what they claim is Twitter's complicity in disclosing Abdul Rahman's identity. For the first time, federal authorities are accusing Saudi Arabia of a spying in the U.S. Last year, a former Twitter manager was convicted of acting as a foreign agent for KSA, or the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. One of two employees caught accepting bribes to pass along confidential user data. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia weaponized that information. Evidence at trial suggested Abdul Rahman's personal information was leaked to the Saudis three years before his arrest. Twitter itself was never charged and has said it cut off access to the bad actors. If there hadn't been any leak from inside Twitter, would Abdul Rahman's identity still be unknown to the KSA regime? He would still be anonymous. He would still be free. Walden alleges a conspiracy forged by the growing financial ties between the tech company and the kingdom, which first invested in Twitter in 2011. Given the closeness of the relationship, given the amount of money that the Saudis were giving Twitter, it's impossible to conclude that t Twitter had no idea this was happening. Twitter declined our request for comment, offering only this earthy emoji as an automated response. When Elon Musk bought the company last year, a Saudi fund maintained its investment. They now hold the second largest stake in Twitter behind Musk. What I'm worried about is that as a condition of their deal with Musk to stay as an owner, that they got special access. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy has asked the Biden administration to review whether the Musk deal jeopardized national security by giving the Saudi government access to more private user data, including for U.S. citizens. He says the administration refused. I don't know why the administration didn't look into this, but for a long time we've looked the other way at Saudi Arabia's outrageous behavior, both domestically and in the region. 
because we wanted their oil. We need to speak up for him. Arij Al Sadan told us she can no longer stay quiet about her brother's case, despite receiving threats, she says, are the work of Saudi leadership. One of them says, I'm going to rape you and I'm going to murder you. I mean, this is horrendous. This is crazy. And uh, of course, when you remember what happened to journalist Jamal Khashoggi, you know how serious that is. These people are serious about their threats. Saudi Arabia is also named as a defendant in Arisha's lawsuit and declined to comment. In correspondence with human rights investigators at the United Nations, however, the kingdom maintained that Abdul Rahman violated anti-terrorism laws and de denied that the claims that his family made that Abdul Rahman had been tortured. The UN investigators, however, didn't buy it. In a September opinion, they determined Abdul Rahman's arrest was, quote, arbitrary and lacked a legal basis, and that no trial should have taken place. John? So, Jim, how does this lawsuit, do you think, relate to the merger between the PGA Tour and Live Golf? You know, we've heard so much talk uh, in the last 24 hours about what the sort of fear is, uh, what the critics of the kingdom have been saying who don't want to see this merger. And it's these kinds of headlines, I'm sure, that the PGA Tour is going to have to deal with stories about uh, alleged human rights abuses, situations like that. These are what critics say the Saudis are trying to sports wash, trying to put a polish on, taking stories like this and attempt to sort of clean the reputation of the kingdom through things like investments in golf and so forth. Jim Axelrod. Thank you, Jim.